Hello there my fellow Hollow Table Heroes and welcome to a brand new volume of Conquest number 14. First of all big thanks to the guys over at Swag Events Discord server for data mining all the details about the upcoming feats and bosses we have to face. As always I'll go through in this video through all the feats that we have to do for both global and sector feats and as well cover the data disks because we do have a big data disk update coming our way. And as always, I'll be putting all these guides uh, on my Swag of Life website. So if you haven't seen it yet, go ahead, check it out. There'll be a link in the description below. I'll just quickly uh, walk through the conquest screens that I do have here for you. So obviously, as uh, the conquest progresses and I'm uploading uh, sector guides for each of the sectors, the video uh, links will show up here on the guide section. Uh, then uh, let's look at the actually discs next. Uh, so we do have the return of, uh, you know, the overzealous disc set as well as stone skin disc set. All of stone skin changed ever so slightly. However, uh, all the discs we have for the overzealous uh, uh, set are coming back. Uh, so the idea is to stack up, you know, two or even three zealous ambition data discs, which really boosts uh, the damage for your healers and support. Then we need fortified so we can survive long enough. Uh, and as well entrench helps there and then vitality not only boosts your survivability but also boosts the damage because of the zealous ambition data disc so this disc is very powerful uh, you, you've got you know powerful support units like dash admiral riders with their aoe wiping out the entire enemy teams and things like that uh, and definitely you know the jedi galactic republic all the support units that we have so many of them who will be hitting really really hard uh, with this uh, set and then the other one is a uh, stone skin so it's a slightly different approach uh, this one is all about surviving so again using fortified data discs then voluntary vanguard to make sure that our uh, strongest ally uh, has permanent mark on them and then lots of entrenched and protection shield as well adding more survivability to your tank that's tanking and then we combine uh, the uh, heal over time that at the start of every turn uh, units gain heal over times and then also the stacking offense, then for each of those buffs we gain, we will be stacking offense. So it's another way of, you know, surviving the attacks and then eventually ramp up your offense. Uh, but definitely the Zealous Ambition one will have a much more uh, power out of the gate. However, only for healers and support. Then for the other teams, this could be a nice set to have as well. And then also worth mentioning that the Leader's Resolve looks like is making a return. So do make sure to pick up the Leader's Resolve if you do, do a come across it as well. It just might help make some of the battles easier. And then as always, uh, I'll be uh, updating my daily plan. Uh, so here for the Red Crate, um, the feeds the daily plan will be skipping is 30 key cards in total. Remember, we can skip up to 34. So I'll be skipping uh, the stab feat, you know, defeating 50 enemies with stab, I think without maybe, uh, you know, those uh, uh, Amplify Agony and Volatile Accelerator of the Discs. Might be a little bit tricky to line those hits up with stab, I don't know. I haven't used at all these brand new units, so maybe it's gonna be easier. But anyway, this uh, the daily plan will be skipping this one, as well as then some of the boss battles like uh, Bo-Katan, Mandalore, uh, Darth Bane, Jedanite Kel, and as well Dark Trooper, Gideon, because they're kind of new units, so many of you might not have them yet, so that's why the plan is kind of skipping those, but obviously if you do have those, you can choose to skip some other feet instead, if you do want. Now, speaking of the feats, let's come to the main portion of the video. Uh, the feats overall, I would say, uh, definitely seems seem a, let, a lot less grinding than previous couple of rounds on Qu Conquest, Let's just hope that doesn't mean that Queen Amidala will be less powerful than Bane and Gideon. Because usually if we have to work hard for, for some of these conquest units, they're very good. But the ones that were kind of easier to get were a little bit less uh, impressive. Let's see how Queen Amidala will perform in a couple of months when we will be unlocking her. But otherwise, uh, let's go through the global feats first. Uh, challenge path doesn't matter defeating 250 enemies still here then we've got b1 uh, droids defeat 600 b1 battle droids now i'm not sure exactly how this will work uh, we'll have to wait and see but i would imagine because b1 right starts with 100 stacks at the start of the battle so when you find a general gravy squad 
If you do take it down, will that count as defeating 100 battle droids? Or will it count as defeating one? Or how this will count? We'll have to wait and see. But obviously you can use whatever you want for that feat. Galactic Republic. Now we've got a lot of Galactic Republic units. You could probably put even more than four teams together. Uh, I just put kind of, you know, the four kind of uh, strongest ones. So we got Padme. Uh, John Skywalker with his clones then obviously we got Bad Batch with Shakti because yes this time I did remember Omega is not a Galactic uh, Republic she is a clone trooper but not Galactic Republic so if you are doing Bad Batch throw in Shakti or you know some other clone whatever you want and then obviously if you do have uh, Jedi Master Kenobi you can just kind of uh, put the remaining uh, Galactic Republic around him and you know they should be able to do some work so you have to win 40 battles with a full squad of Galactic Republic and fortunately this is the only one that requires 40 for example Keller and Grogu you have to win uh, only 20 with them surviving not 40 uh, and I'm not sure exactly how this will work because you know without uh, Amplify Agony uh, as well as Volatile Accelerator Han and Chewie, not as powerful combo, but Dash with his AoE, uh, as long as he gets a turn, he will wipe everybody off. So you just need to make sure that Kaloran and IG-12 Grogu survive until Dash gets a turn. So maybe we'll again be utilizing Sector 1 Data Cron node uh, that enemies usually are quite slow. Or if you got Rey, you know, she should be able to keep everybody alive quite easily. So then maybe Visas for the backup if you do need to revive uh, some of them. So hopefully this shouldn't be too difficult doing 20 battles with us so as i alluded this one i think i should i will be skipping this one uh just because uh, it might be difficult to line up hits to its staff i don't know maybe we'll work out some cheese or something but it's probably something i'll personally just skip for the time being and then we have the return of winning 20 battles with a full squad of lights and mandalorians same as the last time Unfortunately, we do not have enough man light side Mandalorians to form two squads, so we really have to manage a little bit our stamina. Obviously, if you do have the new Bo Katan Mandalore, this should be easy and straightforward. Otherwise, again, we might need to use, you know, whatever Mandalorians we have on that uh, Data Cron node uh, in Sector 1. And otherwise, yeah, similar thing. We got Over Prepared and Booming Boys, which are just kind of uh, the rewards from the other feet. So you can just do whatever you want there with those. Let's move on to Sector 1, so we've got the Jedi one. Jedi like Galactic Republic are a huge faction, you can really put many Jedi teams together. Uh, I just kind of would prioritize trying to put uh, full Galactic Republic Jedi teams together, because then at the same time you can also be working on uh, the Galactic uh, Republic fit as well. So you can kind of form probably two, maybe if you have Relic Caladan back, maybe you could uh, form three Galactic Republic Jedi squads, but anyway, two is plenty. You could build around, you know, General Kenobi, General Skywalker, Kiadi Mundi chucking him there for the armor shreds, and then Yoda for the foresight. And or if you do have Master Kenobi, you know, he will be a better choice uh, to do that. Again, just kind of throwing Barry's Plokun in there as well for defense up. Otherwise, you know, the other Jedi here, you can build something around Jedi Trevon, around Master Luke. However, these are not Galactic Republic squads, so you will be only making progress towards the Jedi feet here in Sector 1. Defense up, uh, Clone Wars Chewie as we know is the easiest and quickest way to get this done, especially if you chuck in Old Ben, Stormtrooper and Barris, they all can give defense up on top of Clone Wars, Clone Wars Chewie's lead to all allies, so you know, maybe you can knock out this even in one battle. Otherwise, uh, also, you know, you can also do this with Bad Batch uh, and just uh, throw in a Wrecker in there that will give defense up to your Clone Trooper allies. That's why you can see a clone in there in the fifth, uh, Cody, uh, not Shakti, so he as well can benefit from defense up. Then we've got Armor Shred, as I alluded, in the Jedi feat, you know, putting some sort of Jedi Galactic Probably squad with John Skywalker, Kiari Mundi, throwing those Armor Shreds, and then as well, if you're doing Mandalorians here, we can do the same thing with Armor and Sabine, they have Armor Shreds. Obviously, there are multiple other characters that do Armor Shreds, I'm just trying to highlight those that can help you uh, get some progress down towards global feats as well and some of the other sector feats. And finally, we have the return of Secret Intel, gaining 80 times. Uh, I just suggest using this General Grievous with Stap and BB-8 if you are going after, obviously, uh, Stap global feat. Otherwise, you can just use any other separate choice like B-1. Then, our first mini boss in Sector 1, we have to battle versus Jedi Traven with Hermit Yoda surviving and as well Hokie Religions. 
uh, because Kermit Yoda is not Galactic Republic, you know, you can pretty much use any Jedi team you want. Anyways, again, trying to chuck in Kiari Mundi, John Skywalker there uh, for the armor shreds, and then Master Yoda to spread uh, as well. There's some foresight to help you survive. And then finally, we are on to the Hoku Legions, chucking Grievous with BB-8, and you know, you should be to go good to go. Hopefully, we'll have to wait and see how modifiers are tuned for the bosses uh, once conquest starts and then here for the final boss we have to battle versus thousand night sisters and we have to win with t3 m4 surviving and without using galactic legends depending on obviously how durable your t3 is will it be able to survive those aoe's from night sisters or not but hopefully general grievous should be able to burn for this uh, night sisters or uh, maybe we'll figure out something else depending obviously on the data disks available let's move on to sector 2 now here we have the no attackers one um, so hopefully by sector 2 you will already pick up a zealous ambition discord 2 so then you can actually uh, you know do some big damage even without your attackers because then your healers and support uh, will be doing a lot of damage again trying to you know build some teams they can also get global feeds done so for example we can build a galactic republic team around padme and then as well around qui-gon mace uh, because you know we here we have to as well one of the other feats is ev evading attacks that's how you got Yoda in there spread foresight hopefully you can evade some attacks and then same thing here for Qui-Gon Mace and General Kenobi they can all give you foresight hopefully evading a few attacks and then uh, other kind of uh, teams that can get as well no attackers done you could put some sort of clone team without attackers helping you for a Galactic Republic feat and finally, obviously, we do have to uh, also do plague in this sector too. That's why I was like putting a Night Sister squad without attackers. All of these are uh, uh, healers or support, except Zombie. She's a tank. Uh, so, you know, this team could be nice, as alluded already. Evasion. If you want to go full on evasion, also throwing Kellerin back there uh, yeah, with Qui Gon and Yoda. So much uh, foresight spamming here. So, hopefully, <laughs> we can evade quite a few attacks with this one. And as mentioned earlier, we do have Plague 400 times, uh, so I'm not sure. We'll have to figure out how we can use this as much as we can. And then for Hellsteel, um, there wasn't really a whole lot of overlap uh, from the other feats and uh, global feats in this one. Uh, not too much really, but at least we can you know, build teams without attackers. Uh, Palpatine's got uh, AoE Hellsteel up, so does Visa, so I think IG just a applies it to himself or to target or something uh, so you know just a couple of different ideas there uh, how we can get this to work and then we've got mini boss we are battling versus virus imperial troopers oh boy those are always nasty but luckily it's sector 2 so hopefully they won't be juiced up too much uh, we do have to win with five surviving the reason why maybe not going with five of first here is good because obviously fives gives out gives out sacrifice so maybe doing some sort of padme team or maybe General Skywalker, I don't know, again, we'll have to wait and see. But if you are using General Skywalker, then you will not be credited for the no attacker's feed. So it really depends, obviously, uh, do you still need it at this point? And then same thing for Dark Side. We're just kind of using some sort of Palpatine, I guess, team for health still up uh, feed. And for the final boss, we are battling versus Qui-Gon Jinn. And we do have to win with Cad Bane and Aura surviving. And without using Jedi, Sith, or Alliance Force users. So maybe some sort of a scoundrel squad there uh, that will complete all the feeds there. Obviously Dash, once he gets his AoE out, he should just wipe out the entire squad. Um, unless they will activate Qui-Gon Zomicron in his one. Again, have to wait and see. These are just uh, rough ideas. Definitely having Baskar Mando there for damage immunity should help Aura and Cat Bay staying alive. Now let's look at Sector 3 uh, for the droid feeds. We have to defeat 50 enemies with droid units. Again, I guess we always have a couple of ways with these droids. You could do uh, Ray uh, Jedi training with the droids, and then as well uh, General Grievous with the droids. Maybe Sortie as well. I'll give it a go. Uh, obviously, let's see if I can get something done with Sortie, and I will add her there as well. And then we got Momentum. Uh, two ways to go about Momentum. One is using Tuscans, and one is using Old Boba. Uh, so maybe that's the one. But I think like even with low gear Tuscans, I remember we were able to get a lot of momentum done. Just find like a General Grievous squad or something or Mon Mothma squad. And even if you lose, you can easily dish out a lot of momentum in every battle. So it's not as scary as you would think uh, this feat. 
and then we've got Purge. Uh, we are very familiar with Purge. It's be you know it's constantly coming back more or less uh, occasionally now. Uh, you have to inflict it 300 times. Obviously, if you do have a full Inquisitor squad, that it's going to be easy and straightforward. Otherwise, we can revert back to the old cheeses with Palpatine, Malak, and then uh, the free uh, Inquisitors. So hopefully, you can get something done there as well. Then we got the foresight. We have to gain it 300 times. It's quite a lot, uh, but luckily, you know the Qui Gon squad here with all these Galactic Republic Jedi that got foresight spamming hopefully shouldn't be too difficult then we got Ray and the droids doing the same and obviously if you are doing your inquisitor battles seven sisters heal ability gives a thing foresight to all uh, inquisitor allies uh, so that should help as well while you're knocking out your purge then for the mini boss we are going up against a palpatine uh, squad probably star killer i would imagine if it's so it could be deadly so we'll have to wait and see what the squad will be and data discs uh, to keep our Old Boba alive. Definitely again, having Beskar Mando there for damage immunity should help out. Uh, so this kind of squad could get all the feats done in a single battle. And then same thing for the final boss. Just using General Grievous to get all the feats done. Which is with Bosna surviving and win without using Galactic Legends. And we are battling versus battle droids. Uh, again, not sure how that battle will go. This team most likely will change. This is kind of a placeholder until like, I get to it and test it out. And then we are moving on to Sector 4 now. So looking at Rebels. Uh, we have to win 14 battles with a full squad of Rebels. Many Rebel squads uh, to put together. The reason I picked these is just so these guys can also get some ability blocks and stealth done in the same sector. Uh, otherwise you can use you know, also other Rebel squads. Uh, we've got here obviously Old Ben here for the ability blocks and stuff like that. Uh, same thing for Cassian and Kyle. Um, you know, you can run them under Mothma, they're both rebel fighters, or if you have a Leia Organa, you know, you can just put all of them there, all the stealth, all the ability block guys uh, under her. Uh, then we've got Imperial Troopers, um, kind of really, I guess, free Imperial Trooper teams that we can kind of put together. Uh, so we got a Veers uh, lineup with Malak, just to, you know, a little bit help them out to survive. Then we got a uh, Gideon. I think that Gideon is actually not an Imperial Trooper. He's only Imperial Remnant. But hopefully, Dark Trooper will be the one doing all the damage. Or if you do have Zealous Ambition Data Disc, then Scout Trooper and, and Gideon, OG Gideon, will be doing all the damage. And they are Imperial Troopers. And then we got the leftover uh, Troopers with the Aiden. So, you know, we got three solid Trooper teams we can uh, use for this uh, feat. Then we have to gain stealth 120 times. So going back to a rebel mishmash squad of uh, units uh, that can uh, land uh, ability blocks, apply stealth and things like that. Um, especially if you have Leia, should be hopefully quite easy to do. And moving on to stealth, a few more options. Obviously uh, we can use uh, Bad Batch with Shakti there. Again, Omega unfortunately is not Galactic Republic. So we'll have to use somebody else in place. Uh, then the good old Darth Maul lead giving us stealth and then if you're throwing like Dooku, uh, Talon, uh, Vader there they also have ability blocks that can help you there and Geos as well uh, they can do the same like Geos piping every time that he creates he gains stealth right and then Pogel on his basic his landing ability blocks so this could as well help you out quite a lot uh, for these two feats and again ability blocks again going back to the Darth Maul lead I spoke to earlier you could do Leia with more ability blocks as well, Rebels with ability blocks. Um, and then as to get the Rebel feed done. And as well we can do another Galactic Republic team. Master Kenobi, he applies a thing on his basic, um, but only to dark side enemies, ability blocks. Lumi does it on her special, Mace does it on his basic I believe. And then Jedi Guardian, she's got an AoE uh, ability block I think. And then R2, you can chuck him in there to help you with the stealth feat. So lots of flexibility here. And then we've got a mini boss in Sector 4. So here we are fighting up against Beskar Mando. Now Beskar Mando lately mini bosses they have been juiced up a lot. So we'll have to wait and see how that one will go. So we have to win with Jedi Cal surviving and without Jedi Seat or Unaligned Force user. Um, you can use any kind of Jedi team you want here really. Um, I just use Jedi Trevon in case you know you don't have any of the Jedi Galactic Legends. 
uh, that they can get this done. Then for Hockey Legions, I don't know, maybe more Mothma squad for the Rebels, ability blocks. Again, we'll have to wait and see. Definitely using bigs in Mon Mothma squads can be deadly once you do have uh, Zealous Ambition Data Disc because he's actually support. Uh, so as soon as he's crit, he gains bonus turn meter and then he can get the ball rolling for you. And final boss, uh, we have to win with Dark Trooper, Gideon surviving and light side only. Uh, so just gonna use, you know, I guess an Imperial Ravnon squad here and hopefully we can get the job done because we are battling Maul. Uh, so that could be quite deadly for the light side. Again, have to wait and see how, how it will turn out in terms of the modifiers. Just kind of a placeholder team, a rebel team there um, that, you know, we can potentially use. And we are already on sector 5 now, so we've got another Inquisitor one. So this one we have to defeat 50 enemies with Inquisitors. Uh, basically similar kind of teams as for the Purge. Uh, but you will notice uh, no no Riva, no Nine Sister because they are tanks. And we do also have a no tank feed. So we'll have to wait and see, can we, you know, make something work, work with this uh, Inquisitor squad, um, you know, without tanks. Uh, and as well, here you could do, you know, if you do have lower gear um, on your uh, Inquisitors, obviously Palpatine, Malag, Cheese, Steam, but obviously here we are using a tank. Uh, speaking of tanks, the no tanks fit, uh, you know, a couple of Galactic Republic squads you can use here uh, not uh, to have uh, tanks. And then uh, in this one, again, you know, some sort of clone team without tanks. And then we've got Mandalorians as well without tanks for the Mandalorian global feat. Again, we'll have to wait and see how these things will uh, play out. And then we've got blind. Uh, there are a few units, obviously, a landing blind. But the easiest way uh, to do is, is with free PO and Chewie. And now we also have Saw with an uh, AOE blind. So we just maybe run it under a CLS squad, get a couple of AOE, AOEs out. Then we got Free Pion Chewie and his basic assisting landing invasion down as well. Because guess what? We have evasion down in here as well. It's kind of nice to have blind and evasion down in the same sector because you can just knock them out uh, with the same team quite easily. And then moving on to boss, we are battling Darth Vader and we have to win with Darth Bane surviving and Hokey Religions. Put some sort of, I guess, Malgus squad together here. He can land a blind, one blind for you uh, with his special in a battle. And then Fallen Basti, she does land evasion down as well. And then we got Hokey Religions. Maybe do some sort of clone Galactic Republic squad uh, without tanks. Maybe that will work. Uh, because uh, usually uh, Darth Vader enemy, they start off with an AoE, which should probably give you lots of bonus turn meter that Rex can do form up and you can get to work. And for the final boss, we will actually see Queen Amidala in action. We'll be battling her as the final boss in Sector 5. You do have to win with Bo-Katan Mandalore surviving and without Galactic Legends. Obviously, if you do have Bo-Katan Mandalore unlocked, you can do all of these feats in a single battle. Uh, definitely using their IG-12 because uh, he's got a blind as well on his AoE. And, you know, if you don't use pass, you will also be credited for the no tanks feat. And then finally, uh, the no GLs one, that's for those that we do not have a uh, Bo-Katan Mandalore unlocked anyway. We'll have to find another way to win. So hopefully maybe CLS with Frippio, uh, Chewy and so can get it done for, you know, more blinds and more evasion downs. Okay, so these are all the feats coming our way. Um, and as always, I'll be playing through all the sectors every day. And I will be updating, uh, correcting, adjusting some of these teams based obviously on the results that I have from my testing. Uh, same thing for my daily plan. You can follow along if you do want. Uh, for now, just day one and day two are kind of there. But by the time Conquest starts, it will be complete that fully. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you find this uh, fits preview guide useful and helpful. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about this new conquest? Uh, I think it looks quite easy and straightforward in terms of the feats. A lot less grindy than the uh, last few runs. So definitely feeling positive about this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, have fun, enjoy your life. And may the RNG be with you, my friends.